Hi everyone, welcome to this GCSE Higher Revision video, the 74 days to go into your GCSE Maths exam, and today we're going to be focusing on the topic of tree diagrams. And I really like tree diagrams, and in this video we're going to go through those now, and I'm going to leave some questions to try, so make sure you pause the video at certain times and you give those questions a wee shot yourself. So, let's get started. Okay, so today's topic is tree diagrams, and I really like this topic. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a tree diagram question for you. So I'm going to go through it, and I'm going to go through different questions based on it. Then I'm going to get you to do one yourself. Then we'll look at one involving fractions as well instead of decimals. Okay, so here we've got a tree diagram. We're told that John and Dan take turns throwing a ball at a target. So John's going to throw a ball at a target, and then Dan's going to take a ball at a target. And then we've got this tree diagram, and we're told the probability that John hits the target is 0.8. The probably that Dan hits the target is 0.3, so John's better at hitting the target than Dan is, because Dan's probably hitting it, it's only 0.3. And we've been asked to complete the tree diagram. And what's fantastic about these tree diagrams is they show us all the possible outcomes, because obviously John can hit it and Dan can hit it, so that's a hit hit. We've got John could hit it and Dan could miss it, so that's a hit miss. We've got John could miss it and Dan could hit it, that's a miss hit. And finally, John could miss it and Dan could miss it, and that would be a miss miss. And we've been asked to complete the tree diagram, so that means we've got to write the probabilities on the branches. So here, the probability of John hitting it is 0.8. That means the probability that John misses the target would be 0.2 because these probabilities have to add together to be 1. He either hits it or he misses it. So that means they're going to add together to be 1. Now in terms of Dan, the probability that Dan hits it is 0.3. So the probability that Dan misses it would be 0.7. And then here again with Dan, the chance of him hitting it would be 0.3. And the chance that Dan misses it would be 0.7. And we're asked to complete the tree diagram and we've done it. We've labelled all the probabilities on the branches. Okay, so let's have a look at our first question. So we've got our tree diagram with the probabilities labelled on it. Now we've been asked to find the probability that both men hit the target. So that would be a hit and a hit. And if we want to find the probability of John hitting and Dan hitting, what we do is we multiply the probabilities on the branches. So we will do 0.8 multiplied by 0.3. And 0.8 multiplied by 0.3 would be 0.24. So that means the probability that both men hit the target would be 0.24. Fantastic. So that would be 0.24. So if we want to find the probability of John hitting and Dan hitting, we just multiply the probabilities along the branches. So we just do 0.8 multiplied by 0.3. If we want to find the probability of John hitting and Dan missing, we would do 0.8 times 0.7. Actually, let's fill out the rest of these. So the probability of John hitting and Dan missing would be 0.8 multiplied by 0.7, and that would be 0.56. The probability of John missing and Dan hitting would be 0.2 times 0.3, so 0.2 times 0.3 would be 0.06. And finally, the probability of John missing and Dan missing would be 0.2 multiplied by 0.7, which would be 0.14. And I find that quite useful whenever you've got a tree diagram to write down all the probabilities of those outcomes by multiplying the numbers along the branches. And I'm actually going to write down what each of the outcomes are. So we could have a hit and a hit a hit and a miss, a miss and a hit, and a miss and a miss, just so we've got the outcomes and the probabilities of each of those outcomes. So the first question says, also probably that both men hit the target. The answer would be, a hit and a hit, that'd be 0.24, and that's it. Okay, now let's have a look at our next one. Okay, the next question says, find the probability that neither man hits the target. So neither man hitting the target would be a miss and a miss. So that'd be a miss and a miss. So that'd be 0.2 times 0.7, which is 0.14. So the probability of neither man hitting the target would be 0.14, and that's it. Okay, next, next we've been asked to write down the probability that exactly one man hits the target. So exactly one man hitting the target would be either John hitting and Dan missing, so it'd either be that outcome, or John missing and Dan hitting, so that outcome. So we want either one of those two outcomes, either a hit and a miss or a miss and a hit. So when we want either a hit and a miss or a miss and a hit, we add together those two probabilities. So we're going to add together 0.56 and 0.06. So we're going to do 0.56 plus 0.06, and that's equal to 0.62. So the probability for exactly one man hitting the target would be 0.62. And just to recap that, because it's either a hit and a miss or a miss and a hit, we just add those two probabilities together, and then that will give us our answer of 0.62. Okay, let's have a look at the last part of this question. So we've been asked to write down the probability that at least one man hits the target. So at least one man hitting. Well, at least one man hitting, well, that would be both of them hitting. That would work. 
A hit and a miss, well that would work, one of the men's hitting the target. A miss and a hit, yeah, one of the men's hitting the target. And a miss and a miss, no, that's not going to work, that's not, because it's at least one man hitting the target, and if they both miss, it's not going to be that option. So that means that we can either have a hit and a hit, 0.24, a hit and a miss, that's 0.56, or a miss and a hit, which is 0.06. So if we add together those probabilities, that's going to be the probability of at least one man hitting the target. So we're just going to do 0.24 plus 0.56 plus 0.06 and that's equal to 0.86 and that's it okay let's have a look at a true diagram question now this is one for you to try and the question says the probability for rain on monday is 0.7 and the probability for rain on tuesday is 0.4 and we've been asked to complete the tree diagram and then we've been asked some probability questions based on the tree diagram so feel free to pause the video now and to complete the tree diagram and then to try these probability questions Okay, so our first part is to complete the tree diagram. So the probability of rain on Monday is 0.7. So that means the probability of no rain would be 0.3. Then we've got Tuesday. The probability of rain on Tuesday is 0.4. So the probability of no rain on Tuesday would be 0.6. The probability of rain on Tuesday would be 0.4. And the probability of no rain on Tuesday would be 0.6. So fantastic, we've completed the tree diagram. Okay, now we've got some probability questions based on that. The first question says, find the probability that it does not rain on either day. So that's the probability of no rain and no rain. And then the next question says, find the probability that it rains on exactly one day. Now, what I'm going to do here is before I actually answer these probability questions, what I'm actually going to do is list the outcomes. So we've got rain and rain, rain and rain. We've got rain and no rain, rain and then no rain. We've got no rain and then rain, no rain and then rain. And we've got no rain and no rain, no rain and no rain. And then let's find the probabilities. So the probability of rain and rain would be 0 0.7 times 0 0.4. That's going to be 0 0.28. The probability of rain and no rain would be 0 0.7 multiplied by 0 0.6. That's equal to 0 0.42. The probability of no rain and rain would be 0 0.3 multiplied by 0 0.4. That's going to be equal to 0 0.12. And finally, the probability of no rain and no rain would be 0 0.3 times 0 0.6. So 0 0.3 multiplied by 0 0.6 is equal to 0 0.18. So I've listed all the outcomes, rain and rain, rain and no rain, no rain and rain, and no rain and no rain. And we've got the probabilities of each of those. So the first question says, find the probability that it does not rain on either day. So that would be no rain and no rain. So that would be 0.18. So 0.18. And that's it. So the probability that it does not rain on either day would be 0.18. Okay, next we've been asked to find the probability that it rains on exactly one day. So that means it's either going to be rain and no rain, this option here, rain and no rain, that rains on exactly one day, or no rain and rain because that rains on one day as well. It wouldn't be rain and rain because that rains on two days, and it wouldn't be no rain and no rain because that doesn't rain at all. So that means it's either rain and no rain, which is 0.42, or no rain and rain, which is 0.12. So we just add these two probabilities together, 0.42 plus 0.12, that's equal to 0.54. So that means the probability of it raining on exactly one day would be 0.54, and that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our last question. Now, this time we were dealing with fractions rather than decimals, because obviously probabilities can be given as fractions instead of decimals. And likewise, tree diagram questions can involve fractions rather than decimals. And just remember that if you're multiplying fractions, you multiply just the numerators and the denominators together, and that'll give you the answer when you multiply the fractions, just multiply the numerators and denominators. So here we've got no over plus two games. The, the probability she wins the first game is a third. The probability that she loses the second game is seven eighths. And we've been asked to complete the tree diagram. And we've been asked to find the probability that Norva wins both games and find the probability that Norva wins at least one game. So we've got this tree diagram question involving fractions. Feel free to pause the video now to try it yourself if you want to. Alternatively, I'm going to go through it in a moment. So the first part says to complete the tree diagram. So we've got the first game here and then we've got the second game here. So the probability that Norva wins the first game is a third. So that means the probability of her winning it will be a third. So that means the probability that Norva loses the game will be two thirds. And I'm assuming here that it's either a win or a lose because in the question it's saying win or lose. Um, obviously, if I was writing this in one of the practice questions, I'd probably give a bit more detail in terms of it. Um, so here that Norva plays the first game and the probability of her winning it is one third. So the probability of her losing it would then be two thirds. And then with the second game, the probability that she loses the second game, losing is seven eighths. And so that means the probability of her winning it would be one eighth because obviously the win and the lose have to add together to be one. And if losing it is seven eighths, then winning it would have to be one eighth okay and then here the second game again the chance of her winning it would be one eighth and the chance of her losing it would be seven eighths so we've completed the tree diagram now the question says find the probability that Norva wins both games so that's a win and a win so we want to find this probability here a win and a win and then the next part says find the probability that Norva wins at least one game what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to list all the possible outcomes and I'm going to find the probability of each of them and then I'll use those probabilities to help us answer these two questions so we've got a win and a win so that would be a third multiplied by an eighth so we do one 
1 times 1 is equal to 1, and 3 times 8 is equal to 24. So the probability of her winning both games would be 1 over 24, 1 24. And actually here, the probability of her winning both games um, would be 1 over 24. So that's the first part. Now, win and a lose, win and a lose. We've got a win, which is 1 third multiplied by a lose which is seven eighths again we just multiply the numerators and denominators one times seven is seven and three times eight is 24. so the probability of her winning and then losing would be seven twenty fourths losing and then winning so losing and then winning that'll be two thirds multiplied by one eighth and if we do two thirds multiplied by one eighth two times one is equal to two and three times eight is equal to 24. now you notice that this fraction cancels down i tend not to want to cancel down in these questions until the very end if i have to because um whenever i have to add options together it's actually handy if they've got the same denominator so if i cancelled this out i get one twelfth and then i would have to add that maybe to something else later so actually I, whenever i'm multiplying again these probabilities here as fractions on the branches i tend to keep them as the same denominator if i if it works out that way and finally a lose and a lose this outcome here a lose and a lose her probability of her losing the first one is two thirds the probability of her losing the second one is seven eighths and if we multiply those together two times seven is 14 and three times eight is 24 and let's just check that one twenty fourth plus seven twenty fourths would be eight twenty fourths plus two twenty fourths would be ten twenty fourths plus fourteen twenty fourths would be twenty four twenty fourths so that's fantastic they all add together to be one so the first question says find the probability that nova wins both games that's a win and a win so that's one over twenty four one twenty fourth fantastic okay next next we're asked to find the probability that nova wins at least one game so at least one so that's not losing both so it's not an option losing both that's not going to work or losing a win that would work that's at least one game a win and a loss that's at least one game and a win and a win that's at least one game so she could either lose and then win win and then lose or win and then win they would all mean that we should win at least one game so we need to add together one twenty fourth, seven twenty fourths, and two twenty fourths. so if we do one twenty fourth plus seven twenty fourths plus two twenty fourths We'll get, we'll get our answer. So 124th plus 724th would be 824th plus 224th would be 1024th, and that's it. And that means that the probability of an over winning at least one game would be 1024th. Now, the question doesn't say to cancel that down. If it does say to cancel it down, you could just half both of those to be 512th, and that's it. So the probability of the Nova wins at least one game would be 512th, and that's it. And that's it. So in this video, we've gone through tree diagrams. I really like this topic, and I hope you do too. Um, if you do want some extra practice on tree diagrams, in the description below there's a link to the practice questions. And because the situations can change for tree diagrams, it might be a good idea to give those a, a go, just to give you an example of a range of situations where tree diagrams can be used. So I really hope you find this video useful. If you have found it useful, please like it and please subscribe to the YouTube channel. And I just want to say, obviously, there's 74 days to go to GCC Maths exams. Keep up the hard work. I really hope that these videos are you know helpful for you. And just remember, if you've got any questions on tree diagrams or on your GCC maths or to sort of how to revise and so on, if you put a comment on below, I'll try and get back to you. So I really hope you find this video useful and I'll see you tomorrow for 73 days to go at 3 o'clock um, YouTube. Thank you. Cheers. Bye.